coming at you live from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my name is Mark Newman. I am the editor of Endocrine News Magazine, the monthly magazine published by the Endocrine Society. And I am here with Dr. William F. Young of the Mayo Clinic, who is the new editor-in-chief of the new Endocrine Society journal, JCEM Case Reports. And this is, this is kind of a big deal. In terms of breaking news, this is, this is pretty big news, right, Dr. Young? Well, yeah, it, this is big news. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a new adventure for the Endocrine Society. Um, we're going to celebrate what we see every day in the clinic with challenging, interesting cases. And we did a Q&A with you in the most recent issue of Endocrine News, and you talked about one of your earliest cases that really sort of puzzled you back in the day. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how it sort of inspired your journey as an endocrinologist trying to, trying to solve the puzzle of some of these uh, issues? Well, Mark, thank you for asking about this. So this was um, just a couple years ago. This was in 1979 uh, when I was an internal medicine resident. And we had a patient who was losing vision. And at that time, we didn't have head MRI scans. A brand new test was the head CT scan. It was pretty crude back then right, by today's right. standards. Um, so the main test we had was something called cellar polytomography, which is a type of standard x-ray looking at where the pituitary gland sits. So the, the nerves to the eyes uh, go right over the pituitary gland, and this woman was losing vision. And it looked like she probably had a pituitary tumor. But when we did the cellar tomograms, there was fluid in the cella. In other words, we didn't see a solid pituitary tumor. So the question was where she had a big pituitary cyst that was raising up the optic chiasm and causing vision loss. And um, the test of the day to figure that out was something called a pneumoencephalogram, where you would do a spinal tap, mm -hmm. you'd inject a bunch of air, and then you'd rotate the patient around so that the air would go into the head, and then you could see if air would go into the cella, in which case it would be an empty cella, or whether the air could stay out of the cell, in which case there was a mass in the cella. It was a very painful procedure. It sounds very painful. Yeah, yeah. So we adapted a technique with our um, neuroradiologist to inject something else. It's called metrizomide, which is a type of contrast agent. And we still had to rotate the patient, but it wasn't a, a painful process. And we also then combined that with a CT scan. Right. And we showed that the metrizomide went up into the ventricles and went right down into the cella, which told us it was an empty cella. Uh, so what the reason she had lost vision is because the optic chiasm, which sits above the cella, instead of getting pushed up, actually fell down into the cella. And that's why she was losing vision. So, so this was all when I was an internal medicine resident. I always uh, was already uh, enthralled with endocrine cases and the puzzles and challenges they represented, and this kind of put a stamp on it. Right. So, right. Um, along with our ophthalmologist, our neuroradiologist, uh, we decided to write it up. So I did what I am hoping a lot of endocrine trainees will do for our new journal, and that is uh, I wrote the case up and we published it in JAMA. Right. Now this is back when the Journal of American Medical Association was taking case reports, which they would rarely do now. Um, so that was my first clinical publication and really ignited my interest in endocrinology. So your first clinical publication in 1979 and now you're the editor-in-chief of JCM case reports. It, it's almost full circle. Yeah. So. It's kind of book, bookends to the career. There you go. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Well, what sort of cases are you hoping to get in your first batch? So we're looking for a variety, Right. number one. And they can be common endocrine disorders, but present with unique challenges, um, ethical challenges, diagnostic challenges, treatment challenges. Or they could be rare endocrine disorders. Right that uh, present in unique ways or with some links that haven't been reported before uh, with different diseases. 
We're also interested in the evaluation treatment of endocrine disorders where resources are limited. I think we can all learn from clinicians uh, that practice where resources are limited and how they adapt to that and what are the shortcuts and tricks that they've learned over time. So this seems like uh, an ideal time for a journal like this, considering the uh, worldwide health challenges that we've all faced. Who, would, who should submit their work to this? So I think at the, the, the individuals that would submit to JCM case reports is a broad swath of medicine. It could start with people like me when I was an internal medicine right, resident. Right. And I've seen some internal medicine residents with great posters here today. And I've encouraged them to consider submitting to the new journal. Um, it would be endocrine fellows in training. Um, they're seeing great cases in their endocrine training program. And junior faculty members. But it doesn't stop there. In other words, I'll probably be submitting a couple case case reports to this new journal. I mean, right, right. Um, I'm excited by case reports. It's the foundation of medicine. Uh, it, what's, it's what gets me to go to the clinic every day. Absolutely. And this seems like a really a, a fantastic format to get both early career clinicians involved, mid-career clinicians involved, as well as senior level clinicians involved. And, you know, I think it's probably important to share this data with each other to search for solutions to these problems together. Well, Mark, that's the whole point, isn't it? In other words, if we're all living in silos with a unique case and we've learned some really important learning points by evaluating and treating a patient, we should be encouraged to share those and for others to learn. So Absolutely. I, I want JCM case reports to be the journal of choice to report an interesting case, but also the journal of choice for clinicians to read, to learn about novel approaches to complex and curious endocrine disorders. Because nothing is as simple as you think it may seem when you're looking at something like this, right? Like the case you just told us so early in your career, uh, it seems like that has led you on this entire journey. Well, Mark, that's true. Um, now, having said that, any any uh, medicine residents or endocrine fellows listening to my description of what we did in 1979, you know, they'd say, well, you just do an MRI scan. Right. It, it's simple, right? Um, but they're going to be saying that about cases today, you know, 40 years from now. Absolutely. And so when does the uh, JCM case reports launch officially? So the, the official launch date has not been set. Okay. Um, the instructions for authors should be available online in early August. Okay. And our goal is to actually start um, reviewing manuscripts late August. Right. So this seems like a, an exciting next step for the, the Endocrine Society's publications department. This is, just seems like a, a brave new, bold new step for clinicians in the endocrine space. Well, I, th I think it is. It's something that the Endocrine Society hasn't done before. Um, I think we've always struggled with, well, we, we don't want to uh, conflict with uh, journal clinical endocrinology metabolism. Right, right. And so this is a way of taking clinical endocrinology, but this unique space of clinical endocrinology and dedicating it to a specific journal. Right. And I think I speak for a lot of people out there. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> so can't wait for JCM case reports. And uh, do you want to open it up for questions? Sure, sure. Any, any A's out there? Any Q's for some A's? Oh, here we go. The Just, question was, was there a treatment for, for Dr. Young's early case back oh, in 1979? Oh, yeah. Yeah, good question. <laughs> what did we actually that do? That is a good question. What, what did we actually do for that patient? So we actually did do a transvenal procedure where we put fat in the cella to prop up the optic chiasm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Would that be the same treatment today? 
Well, it would, yes, it would be the same tree. That, so that hasn't changed. Wow. But the finding the problem has changed remarkably. Finding the problem's changed dramatically. Yeah. So, okay. So seeking has changed. The solution has not. So good to know. Anybody else? Well, if no more questions, I guess we'll wrap it up. Thank you, Dr. Young, for being here. And we all look forward to the launch of JCM Case Reports later this year. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.